and he was definitely very comfortable with me. I would walk to the forest and start calling. Baby squirrels. And he would always come down. I've been doing wildlife photography for 10 years. When I was in Sweden, I slowly learned about this squirrel, Remy. I knew she was pregnant. One day, I discovered her body next to the road. I was devastated. I went to the forest to that same area I used to see her so much. I left her body, then I positioned lots of flowers, and suddenly I saw a tiny, tiny baby squirrel. And then three baby squirrels came down the tree. I knew they were hers. Because no adult squirrels went up that tree. So from that day onwards, I was in the forest every day to make sure that they survived. to raise them, give them food, make sure that there aren't any domestic cats around. And I would wait. And they got used to me more and more. Baby pair who'd always make this noise when eating next to me. Apparently when they feed from their mother, they make a similar noise to almost tell their mother, this is good. So they were almost signaling to me, mum, this is good, keep feeding me. I guess I became their surrogate mother. My goal from the start was to have them stay wild. So I created some boundaries. I just try to make sure I'm not hand feeding them. I'm not touching them. But I never try and disrupt natural behavior. After about three weeks, they started to cache food, which is when they forage and then they will bury it into the ground. Baby Pear and Chibarashka became great friends. They would follow each other in the forest, they were play fighting a lot, and they seemed to be learning together at the same time. I stopped seeing the other two. I hope that they may have gone to another area. I've done my part and now it's time for them to survive on their own. After spending five months in Sweden, it was time to go home to the UK and see my family. They had developed into young adult squirrels. They were finding their own habitat and territory and food, and now they are fully wild squirrels. Hopefully I can find the baby pen Shubarashka again this winter. When I went back to Sweden, I was really curious to see baby Pan Chibarashka. I knew that they would grow up and because it was winter, they were actually developing their winter coat. So they would look very different. I made this noise, which I used to make when they were younger. And I saw two very small baby squirrels. I noticed a pattern on one of the squirrel's cheek, which was very similar to baby pears. But then, and as I got closer and closer, they were also not nervous of me. And then a local in the village walked past on the street and he was quite far from them. And they immediately ran up the tree and they started making alarm calls. That told me that it was baby pear and Chibadashka. They recognized me. I was so excited to discover that they had survived. 
I was amazed that they had stayed together and formed this little friendship. I think the main thing I took away from it is that these small animals can form individual partnerships with each other.